Hi, I'm going to be talking to you about the um, carbon dioxide sensor MHZ14, or more specifically the, the 14A, which in my case has a little white connector, ribbon cable connector here on the left. I um, should also point out that my sensor is a um, 5000 ppm, not the usual uh, 2000 ppm. We can start by showing a part of the uh, data sheet. Here we can see that Your working voltage for the sensor is um, yeah, roughly 5 volts, so it, it's quite suitable for the, the Raspberry Pi. Even with the, the output signal, um, 0 0.4 to 2 volts, or with serial communication, I think it's around about 3.5 um, uh, volts. So it, it's, it's fairly good for the Raspberry Pi. Um, unusually, when I bought this sensor, and I had a look around now, there, there doesn't seem to be any, any programming solutions for the Raspberry Pi, other than a, a Python script, which I saw. So that's, that's um, yeah, the idea of the screencast, is to show my two different programs, one being a PWM, a Pulse Width Modulation Solution, and the other using the uh, the serial communication UART on the on the um, Raspberry Pi. I can show my setup of my Raspberry Pi using an old old style um, Raspberry Pi. In this case, uh, it's got 26 pins. As you know, it'll work just as easy on the on the 40 pin, and it should also work just as well on the Raspberry Pi 3 as well. And the way I've connected it is... Um, you're going to have to imagine there's a white uh, ribbon cable connector here. Uh, the, the first wire on the left the other one is for the uh, pulse width modulation. And if you're only going to use that uh, programming uh, solution, then um, you only need that one and the, the red wire, which is the 5 volt pin, and the black wire, which is ground. But as I'm going to be showing you two different programs here, the first one being the PWM, and the other one being the, uh, the serial connection. And that's why I've got these other two cables here, the, uh, the blue and the green uh, transmit and receive serial connection. If I go over to my console on my Raspberry Pi, I'll take the left one here. So if I show the, the PWM program running, This program, it just takes a reading every 30 seconds and prints out what the um, uh, ppm parts per million uh, carbon dioxide are. What I'll do is, uh, under this screencast on YouTube, I'll um, I'll put two links, the first link to the first program, which is the PPM, and the second link to the uh, the serial communication. There, we've got our first reading. Carbon dioxide, PPM, 395 parts per million. I can show you the program there in the of a console. Yeah, 
in both programs because these two programs are in uh, C++. I'm interested in doing these solutions in C++. Um, as you know, they'll, they'll work just as easily in C. Uh, then you just have to change the, the C outs to the old style uh, printf. So the first line it shows you how you can compile this program, and the second line how you can run it there from the Raspberry Pi. Um, what this program does basically is it, it, it reads the duration in um, microseconds, how long pin 5 is active. It, it puts that value into the, the variable duration. And then from the data sheet for the uh, the sensor, here we've got that information there. We just run it through the formula to get the, uh, the parts per million carbon dioxide. And again, yeah, um, just notice that I'm using the value 5000 because my sensor is a uh, 5000 ppm sensor. It seems to be the case that the, the, the older style of sensor is a 2000. So all we need to do is replace the 5000 with 2000, or in this case, the number 5 with 2. So on to the, the serial program. Let's get to the so, and then so what you're seeing here is a very good example of uh, a program using serial communication which um, has some kind of background serial communication as well. So we see that even though yeah, the program's working in a way, I can I can uh, do a control C here and then run it again and it might work a little bit more or not. It's not really working properly. Now the reason for this is like I said there's there's other serial communication running in the background. So what we've got to do is we've got to stop that background serial communication. And if we jump to a very good home page which explains how you do this, uh, spellfoundry.com, I'll put that web link as well underneath this uh, YouTube uh, video. And we go down to disabling the console. Explains what you have to do for uh, a normal Raspberry Pi or the newer Raspberry Pi 3. So here we can see that um, if we want to stop um, serial communication in the background, then we have to run these two lines. And then if we want to stop that type of communication for good, then we need to go in for this uh, edit this um, command line dot text. But just, just to show this running, and in my case, I don't actually want to stop that background communication for good, because I I, I have a uh, headless um, setup with my Raspberry Pi. In this case, I am connecting with uh, SSH, Secure Shell. Uh, usually, I'd, I'd be connecting with VNC, which is using a v, uh, serial connection. So obviously, in this case, it would, it would interfere with this information and my program. So... I'll just copy this line, jump over to my Raspberry Pi console, and paste it. And 
then take the next light. Paste it again. And then we should be able to run the program without any problems. And there it is running nicely. I've still got my PPM program running in another console. Make it they're giving approximately the same values. Uh, remember that the, the um, pulse width modulation, one to the left, is running every 30 seconds, reading the sensor, and this uh, serial one, it's running every second. If I just stop the serial one, We'll see, and we'll have a quick look at the program. Again, information on how to compile, how to run on your Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, this program is a little bit of a mis mishmash, I, I reckon. It's, both programs are really just hard and fast. Get the sensor working and well and good. I'm using different libraries here. Wiring Pi, Wiring Serial. Now, I'm only really using Wiring Serial for the, the Serial Open. And I'm only really using Wiring Pi in this case for the um, delay function. Not really using too much of wiring pi there. Again, I'll put their link as well if you need the wiring pi libraries uh, underneath this uh, YouTube video. Uh, the main part of this program is the the read and write functions, which are coming from the the Uni STD library there, and they're a part of standard um, C. So if I go a bit further down here, all this serial communication program's doing really is it's um, sending nine bytes of information to ask the sensor for information, and then it's reading the returning nine bytes to see what the sensor reading is. And here are the nine bytes in hex that are being sent out. that are being sent out with the, the right, and then they're being read in with the next line there, read. And these two for loops, really the only, the only thing they're doing is um, they're printing out the nine bytes of information that are being sent back from the sensor. And the first for loop is printing them out in hex, and the second for loop is printing them out in uh, the usual decimal values. Um, you don't really need them. What I was thinking of doing was I was thinking of uh, putting a checksum in to this program. But uh, once you've turned off the background serial information, uh, communication, then um, you're getting fairly stable readings. So I didn't really, for my case, it didn't really seem necessary. So I'll just jump out of this one again. And start it going. There's fairly stable readings there. And I've left left this one going a couple of days and it, it's it's still running, so we just show the data sheet again for the serial part of the communication. And there we can see the send command. You're sending out those nine bytes of information using the same hexadecimal values there. 
and then you're getting a return nine bytes and it's the the byte two and byte three which are the interesting ones because byte two is holding the high level concentration byte three is holding the low level concentration and they're the two interesting bytes there of those nine returning um, remember that this is uh, yeah, the computer world so your first byte is byte zero so you're reading nine bytes byte zero to byte eight nine in all and there's your, your formula for getting your, your BPM. So, like I said, just thought I'd put this information out there. So if anyone was in the same, same situation looking for, um, reading carbon dioxide PPM values with this sensor on the Raspberry Pi, then um, hopefully this will give you a few pointers in in the right direction hope it helps <laughs>